Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, we're doing a comparison of some different auto landers and some of the different techniques that those auto landers use. And we're trying to see out of all the different methods that we can try, uh, which one is going to use the least amount of Delta V. So which one is the most efficient? Let's go ahead and switch camera views here for just a moment. And this is what we've gathered up so far. So once again, if uh, based on the orbit that we're currently on, if we do nothing, if we make no changes whatsoever, we will pass over Brighton Beach at an altitude of 36.5 uh, kilometers, basically. In each one of our configurations, we're starting with 8,668 meters per second worth of delta V. And when we went through the test using a BLA a base land autopilot, we found that using the uh, retro engines, so facing the prograde position and using the retro engines <clears throat> got us, <clears throat> excuse me, got us the best result. In the last video, we tested out Pursuit MFD using its close method. So now we want to check out the above method and the far method and see if those make any difference. So let's go ahead and switch camera views and jump right into it. So once again, our configuration is the same as it's always been. Bring up burn time calculator, put in the RCS. You can see this is the same. And you can see in orbit MFD that everything is the same. So let's go to pursuit MFD. Let's go to configuration and change from close to above. This will be this, the next one we're going to test. Then we're going to go back. We're going to choose land. Brighton Beach is already selected. So we're just going to put in landing pad number two. And now we're ready to uh, continue on with our test. So we're going to warp time forward at 100 until we're around 300 seconds. Then we're going to come out of time warp, press the HLD button, which will do the initial orientation where it uh, turns and faces prograde. And that'll take about uh, 90 seconds, something like that. And then we will warp time forward until we are, let's see, I just don't want to overshoot. <laughs> okay, so about right there while I did overshoot. So we'll press the HLD uh, autopilot and that will put it into the prograde position. And we'll use a little bit of time warp because these tests can take a while and we've seen four examples now. So we'll go to three time warp on this part And one thing it'll be interesting to see if it has any impact on the overall delta V by using this little bit of time warp. And I don't think so, because I think it was two delta V the last time as well. Mm, looks like it went down maybe just a little bit there though. So maybe maybe even just using three time warp did have a small impact on that. So it's something we might want to keep in mind. At 180 seconds, it's going to orient again. So we'll let it do that. And again, just because these tests take it take some time, we'll just do a little bit of time warp here just to get that vessel oriented. And I've been doing uh, these tests around seven time warp through the main part of the engine burn. So we'll continue to do that here. But right now we're oriented, so we're just going to go to 10 until we're ready to do the burn, at which point we'll go back to real time. So four, three, two, one, and real time. We'll let it, we'll all, I'll try to always let it start the burn at real time. Okay, so the burn has started. So now we'll go to a seven time warp. I actually I think we were doing eight, eight time warp. And that'll get through the, uh, the bulk of the burn. So let's select over to our camera so we can see a bit more than nothing. And with this camera view, we can see the mountain there that uh, we recognize this range as being where Brighton Beach is located when we're coming into it from this direction anyway. And let me switch over to the surface. And what I've been doing is as the altitude comes down and the MFD gets increasingly busy, I start bringing down, the, I start stepping down the time warp. But uh, it's pretty smooth until we get to around like 5,000, then I feel like it's starting to get a bit busier, so I'll start stepping down the time warp at that point. Just don't want these tests to take, you know, an excessively long time. So 
So we're getting there. Maybe we'll go down to about seven time warp now. Actually, maybe even six. Five thousand. So there's five thousand. Seems like things get busy. 4, so I just start slowly stepping down the time warp. Three thousand. And we'll stay here at three time warp until we get to about 10, 500 meters. Because we still have to turn on the APU and put down the landing gear. And in each test, in each test I've been waiting until I get the, the call out from the computer person saying that the gear is up. 1,000, 900, 800, 700, 600. So there's about 500, so we'll go back to real time for the rest of this. And here in just another few meters, we're going to get that call out. I think it's at 275 meters. So just under 300 meters, we get that call out. In fact, yeah, I think it's exactly 275. I should probably just make it a habit to... Put, turn on the Warning, APU and put the gear down, down at like 400 because otherwise I get the annoyance of the computer telling me the gear is up even though it's transitioning into the down position I really think the code should be updated so that if the gear is in transition 100. stop warning me because the warning is pointless so we're almost 75. over the landing pad And we're about 50 meters up, pretty close to zero on our 40. speed, coming down just at about a meter per second. And this autopilot will get pretty much straight over the pad and then level out and then do its final bit of descent. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the close above and far have any impact on how this autopilot performs. Information. APU running. And we're leaving the APU running all the way until we get wheel stop. So we'll continue to do that to do that for this test as well. Just to keep everything as comparable as possible. Okay, so we're 33 meters up and we're almost dialed in, so we're going to start uh, falling here in a moment. And looks like the autopilot's happy with its position, so now we're going down. Twenty. Fifteen. Just about ten more meters to go ten, here. Eight. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And it really slows down for a pretty delicate one. touch, just in that last little bit. APU running. Wheels, wheel Alright, wheel stop. Turn off the APU, bring up burn time, and see how we did. Okay, DB plus RCS, so 6,378. 6,378. So let's put that in. 6,378. Okay, well, compared to the close program, above didn't do quite as well. A difference of about 30 meters per second. And again, you know, that's not... You know that's not zero it's not a huge amount compared to what we've used but you know again it's not zero either so let's go ahead and exit out of orbiter and let me exit the launch pad give it about a second and then relaunch the launch pad and we're going to go back into that same scenario oops let me switch camera views we're going to go back into that same scenario which is before and we're going to launch orbiter so one more test to go but uh, there's there's one other thing I want to do before we close out this series but I'll probably do that in a, in a separate video okay so we'll bring up burn time and add in our RCS that's the same you can see same PEA same APA same everything so we'll bring up Pursuit MFD 
and we're going to go to the configuration and this time we're going to use far and this will be our final test so let's go to land Brighton Beach is already selected put in the pad to warp time forward until we get to uh, about 300 seconds and then we'll press hold give the autopilot time to settle and I'm just out of curiosity this time I'm going to let the autopilot settle uh, without any time warp because I want to see if it makes any difference because I felt like I felt like that last time it used like one more meter per second that it did on the previous test so four three down to ten okay so right about here we'll go hold and no time warp at all uh, takes about 90 seconds I think for for it to orient which can seem like an eternity when you're <laughs> you know you're in the orbiter you get used to putting in a maneuver and then press T to let it quickly do it and then go to R but does is that efficient it is efficient if you um, if you use like control thrusts and time warp that's definitely efficient but if you press prograde and then hit T for time warp or retrograde or any of the autopilot systems are they as efficient now again at some point you got to be a bit realistic with your real life time and say I'm not gonna mess with you know worrying about some computer program that is uh, you know showing a slightly lower number it's like my my real lifetime is more valuable than that <laughs> which I totally understand so let's see so I think that's the same as it will no no it was at six six five last time so let's see what happens when it gets done here okay so maybe using that a uh, little bit of time warp did make some difference but again you know life balance okay about 180 so now it's going to kick in and now we're not going to worry about you know a difference of uh, less than one meter per second so because we do value value our real lifetime let me actually do this though let me go to three until it gets settled And then once it's settled, we'll go to 10 time warp to get through to where the burn can start. And it's pretty well settled, so 10 time warp. And again, we'll always try to make sure we're at real time when the burn initially starts. So coming up on that, oh, I forgot to switch camera views again. I'm sorry, but you haven't really missed anything. And we've done the same thing so many times now it's pretty much rinse and repeat okay so the burn has started so just like before we'll go to 8x on the time warp and on this side we'll bring up our camera just gives us a better idea of what's going on and it's something nice to look at instead of just empty space and a bunch of numbers on an MFD And I'll go ahead and switch the HUD over to surface so we can see our altitude, we can see our descent rate. So this is the final program. We're using Pursuit MFD. We're using it in the FAR configuration. And yeah, we're just I'm just interested in knowing, you know, which one of these methods is going to be the most efficient. Um, is there a clear victor overall? I feel like, based on what we've seen so far, I feel like there is a pretty clear victor. And if you've been following along, then that clear victor seems to be the baseland autopilot in the prograde. So we'll come out of time warp here, down to five. In the prograde orientation using the retro engines, it seems to be pretty significantly better than the other ones. But when we get all done here, we'll do a, a final analysis. You are cleared to land. Okay, so we're almost there. Just a few more meters to go. A little bit of time left on the braking portion. 900. 
And again, about 500 meters. We'll go to real time. And right there. It'd be really nice to go ahead and turn the APU on now. Just so I don't get those annoyances from the computer, but just to make everything exact, we'll do it the same way. At about 275 meters, we get the call out. There's the call out. Turn on the APU. Maybe if I put down the gear fast, I won't get the, the third warning. Still got the third warning, even though the landing gear was just a few centimeters away from being down. I don't know why that bugs me so much, but it, it does. <laughs> Take a sip of water while it's finalizing our landing. So we're just about 50 meters up, 50. falling at about a meter and a half per second. 40. Okay, so this is the part of the program where it levels out the vessel and then it's just going to finalize that last couple of meters over to the dead center of the pad before finally lowering down. Information. APU running. Okay, it looks like it's happy with its position, so now it's going to come down those last few meters 20. until we get wheel stop. 15. 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, Just about three, two more meters to go. 2, 1. Wheels wheel stop. Okay, there's wheel stop. So control A, turn off the APU and bring up burn time calculator right away. Total DV plus RCS. So that's our number, 6,430. 6,430. So let's switch camera views here one more time, 6,430. 6,430. Okay, so, well, between the pursued MFD methods, uh, based on this altitude, and I suppose this could change depending on your altitude, but at least uh, from a glance this appears to be the best of these three but not by a huge amount um yeah not not by not by a giant amount okay now one other thing i want to do is i want to compare how much more delta v did each one of these methods used compared to the best and this was the best so let's take our best method and subtract out each one so we're going to say equals and I'm going to say dollar sign E4, dollar sign E dollar sign 4, which should lock in that one, minus E2. Okay, and then, yeah, I'll let it autofill. Okay, so compared to the best method, uh, the, the BLA hover used 240 meters per second extra. Compared to the best, the main engines used 182, and of course this one's zero because it was the best, and then compared to the best, uh, Pursuit MFD used about, you know, 350, 360 on average more, so, so whatever this MFD is doing, it's definitely handling things a little bit better than, than, um, than Pursuit MFD was doing. Now, there's one other thing I want to see. What would happen if we bring down our altitude so you know when we get around to the halfway point and we do some kind of deorbit maneuver and we have a lower altitude over Brighton Beach what would happen would that improve things or would it not make any difference at all so when we come back in the next video that's what we're going to find out but since we've already flown all six of these on camera I'm not going to do that I'm just gonna fly one of them and we're just going to compare um, and I'll fly the other five off camera and we're just going to compare uh, the difference between lowering our altitude versus not lowering our altitude. So if you like this series, please do hit the like button. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of my results. Do you see something I'm doing that would maybe 
suggest uh, that this information is uh, somehow invalid or something about it isn't right, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next part.